So today we're going to talk about sleeps. Well, what I like to consider their masterpiece, Dope Smoker. I agree. <laughs> but before we talk about sleep, we need to talk about High on Fire. Because how I got into sleep, I was a big High on Fire fan first. Yeah. Um, the thing that I really, really loved about High on Fire is they definitely got some stoner rock elements going on in their music. When you listen to Sleep and you listen to Matt Pike when he's playing guitar, yeah. you can hear the springboard or the beginning early burst stages of but, what High and Fire became. Yeah. But what I like the Behind Fire, though, is they're more metallic. Yeah. I consider High on Fire a full-on metal band. And the stuff that I love from them, I mean, being a speed freak from the 80s, like I like 80s thrash. I love Slayer, Give Me Early Exodus, or Early Metallica. I like fast stuff. Yeah. And the stuff that I really, really love from High and Fire is the faster stuff. Got you. I mean, I like the slower stuff, but the stuff that I usually go to from High and Fire is the very, very fast stuff. So I've been a, a High and Fire fan for a while. And then I, then I kind of found out, you know, eventually as you get into them, that, that, that he, that Matt had, he was in another band called Sleep. Now, Sleep, from what I understand, they, were, they got together and started in the 90s. Yes. Put out a couple albums, and then they kind of went into hiatus. Yes, they did. And then more recently, they got back together, and now Sleep Plays Live. You literally just saw them. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I, I find it ironic that back, because I heard Sleep back in the 90s when they first came out. Um, so that would have been before High and Fire. Yeah, okay. and got introduced to them because we were just talking about this earlier, the movie Gummo. Yeah. And I really felt, I mean, just in my own personal opinion. And see, and we laugh at that. It's and the reason we laugh at that is brutal movie, though. Is because, well, it's not only a brutal movie, but it was trying to capture this kind of Midwest mentality yeah. that was kind of going on. And I don't know if it was making fun of it or it was just yeah. trying to do this artistic expression. But using the band Sleep, I think, really kind of captured the mentality of what was going on in yeah. the Midwest when it came to metal. Oh my God. And I, I don't know if Sleep considered themselves a joke back then or not, but no. for me, you listen to it today and you're like, this is brilliant. You know, and I kind of call them kind of the, the, the launching point of the ground zero. Oh my God. Yeah. Of really kind of where Stone, Stoner and Sludge Absolutely. And Doom went. You Absolutely. Know? They really, really are grand, ground zero for a lot of that stuff. And for me, I'm more the kind of slower, melancholic kind of guy. Okay. And that's the kind of metal I like. So I just like. This is my <laughs> band. This is my band. You know, I, I've, I always, I've always yeah. liked. Um, if we want to talk about the 90s, yeah. as far as like stuff that I like, I, I, I got into Fu Manchu. Yeah, oh, Fu Manchu's a great I band. Like, I like Nebula. Yeah. We should stop. Yeah. No, no, we're okay. We're, we're all good. We're good. <laughs> Parent interrupting break. Let me think the, the exact location that we were before we got cut off. <laughs> so anyway, I was... <laughs> Oh, that's funny. <clears throat> so as I was saying before, like, I, like I've, I've been familiar with High and Fire and was into them for a while. I always knew of Sleep, but I never really kind of put much thought into them well anyway i was uh i was driving in my car and i i had satellite radio xm yeah. series xm you know and i had it on the metal station and um jerusalem came on well it was like i'm going through and all of a sudden like oh okay cool sleep oh yeah this is that band that that matt from high and fire is in okay well i'll listen to it and it's real slow and drudgy and I was with some friends, and you know, I'm like, okay, we just kind of go on. We're driving, and we're driving. The song's still going. We're driving. <laughs> the song's still going. <laughs> we're driving longer. <laughs> and I said to my friend, I'm like, I'm like, dude, this this has been the same song for like the last half hour. He, I'm like, yeah, sleep Jerusalem. <laughs> and and it's it, the song is like an hour long. It is. It's an hour and eight minutes, I think. And then ultimately, that is dope smoker. So it's one, well, technically it's one song. It is. It is, and it's so long. <laughs> it's kind of like, um, have you ever heard Pink Floyd's Animals? Yes, of course. Okay, so I had the cassette version of that because that's how old I am. Yeah. And when I used to listen to that album, one of the songs was so long that you had to flip it over to the other side <laughs> to hear the rest of the song, and that's kind of basically like this album. Yeah, I, well. I, um, <laughs> now the, I'll be honest with you. The crazy thing about sleep is the riffs. The the riffs are themselves are long. 
like the the main riff, or at least the first riff that starts off Jerusalem, is like this long riff where you don't know where it stops or where it ends. Yep. Really, really slow. And um, I, I, I never saw Sleep Live, and I know you have. I'm in but, denial that they are still <laughs> not playing live right now. But I, um, I saw like video footage of them, and it's like, there's, it's a three piece. Mm -hmm. The bass player, the guitar player, and the drummer, and like say, and my, and like I see that he literally has this like wall of orange amplifiers. Yes. Like three, like one, two, three cabinets, one, two, three cabinets. And I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah, all right. I'm, I've seen Slayer where they have the walls of Marshalls. Yes. And they're all fake, you know, except for like maybe like there's like one that's mic'd down here. But I notice on stage, I'm like, microphone, microphone, microphone. <laughs> I'm like, holy shit, he has all, they have all these mics, they have all these amplifiers mic'd. Can I disappoint you, though? What? I'm sorry, to, they are not very loud live. Aren't they? High on Fire is 50,000 times more of a Seriously? than they are. They're not that loud. Wow. I was expecting Swan's material coming yeah. at me when I went to see them, and it wasn't. Maybe, well, they're able to, maybe <laughs> but they were good. Maybe they're able to control it. Was it was loud. Yeah, they were, but it was not like the same. And I'm glad it wasn't, to be honest. It was yeah. a very different experience. But I, 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 I'll tell you what, man. I mean, I, I've, I've heard my share, share of Stoner Rock, and I'm going to call this Stoner Rock. I do. Because the album is called Dope Smoker. Yeah. And I, and I think the song is, 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 is a love letter to smoking dope. I think I think the actual singer has actually said that that's what it's all about. Well, and if you look at the art, there is a total theme in all of their covers, you know, yeah. with this, okay? If you look at their latest album, yeah. The Sciences, I mean, it's got the astronaut, yeah. you know, basically being hooked up to a bong. So, yeah, I think that this is, all their albums are really, at this point, love letters to just the love of the 420. I get it, and I think it's great. <laughs> yeah, what, so what do you think of uh, of this album? I think this album is instrumental and monumental in the way that um, basically, I think it changed rock and roll as we know it. And what I mean by that is I think that because I feel a lot of, in terms of this album, was kind of an F you to the record companies. Yes. <laughs> um, I think that what it did to the rest of, I think especially the metal scene yeah. and the stoner and doom scene was, is said, this is a DIY movement. And we don't need this big, huge record exec thing. From what I understand, what from what I understand, yeah. is they're they're gonna do this, and they they were gonna bring it to like their record label or something like yep. that. And the record label's like, all right, well, let's talk about um, what song is gonna be like the single. Ugh. And they're like, well, the 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 album is one song. <laughs> and they're like, what? And they're like, yeah, this song's like an hour long. And they're like, well, we. Kind of like a video, to, a song to make a video for something that they can maybe give to oh. the radio stations or something like that. And they're yeah. like, they're like, yeah, there's this one song. And I think supposedly, well, there was a little bit of controversy with it. You know, uh, they, yeah, they they just they did it and it pissed the record labels off. <laughs> it pissed the record label off, which I think was awesome. And yeah. I don't. The thing is, what was so great is I think that they, they're such talented musicians yeah. and they're such. They're just so cool, and I think they have such a huge, solid fan base. Let's think about it. This band's been around for over 20 yeah. years, okay, well, you know, and sold out, yeah. you know, even to this day. When I went to their last show, just this eclectic mob of people, yeah. everybody, from people wearing Bad Religion t-shirts to Dead Kennedy to High on Fire to Wind Hand, you know, yeah. and just people in between. I think this is just a very beloved band, like the Melvins, yeah. you know, kind of put them in kind of the same yeah, category. Absolutely. I think they realized at that moment in time, this pivotal time, we don't need to do this anymore. And I think this was a record that was made for their fans. Yeah. And for the love of the people who have just stayed devoted to them for such a long time. And I think that that's why I love this band so much. is because I think they stick to their guns. Yeah. And they've been, they've been incredibly successful at it. Absolutely. Well, I, 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 well another thing, too, is like, I, I, it, I don't know if it could be the longest song I've ever heard. Yeah. Uh, um, I mean, maybe, Vog maybe Wagner in Germany wrote something <laughs> that was longer. <laughs> But um, just just the testament, like, 
hey, let's write a song that's like an hour long. Yeah. Inagata the Vita from Iron Butterfly is like 17 minutes. Oh, yeah. And well, only it fits on one side. Just to make fun of Freebird for being so long, yeah. you know. But yeah, no, this is this is, this is is something that's completely different. They did play this that night. Um, forgive me. I did have to leave early because I had to get up early for work. Hey. But they did play it, but it was only like a 28-minute version yeah. of it. <laughs> it wasn't the full um, hour and eight minutes. The, the thing that I really love about Sleep and the song Jerusalem is that I mean as I said before like I'm a speed freak guy like fast music I, you know I'm, I'm kind of a faster paced kind of person gotcha. and, and this album this song forces you to slow down and be like okay sit back and just take it in one chord at a time <laughs> Hey gang, this is Ray, and I just want to say thank you very much for checking out my video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you want to see more videos, please click on the subscribe button. And if you like what you see, please give it a like. That would mean a lot to me. And if you're wondering why I'm wearing Hawaiian shirts, well, when I'm not talking about records, I'm talking about my other love, Tiki. I have a show called Tiki with Ray. If you want to check that show out, just search Tiki with Ray on YouTube. It'll come up.